hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome. My name is Bob Stewart. I've got my friend Debbie here with us today. I'm super excited. She's uh, been a, a returning guest of ours, and so we're excited to have her here today to talk today about rejection-free prospecting and how to get more business from the people you know. As we get started here, I want to make sure as we go through today, everybody knows where to go and ask a question of Debbie. And so what I'd like you to do right now as kind of people pour in the room here, go find that little questions area. And I want you to check in for me, but I want you to check in with this, okay? Here's what I want you to think about. We're gonna talk today about kind of communicating with people you know and how to get business out of that. I want to think about all your past clients, okay? And I want you to think about, let's say the last year, let's say 2019, how many of your past clients, like percentage wise, do you think you talked to or communicated with intentionally? last year. So like if I had 100 past clients and you think you've got 70 of them, right? 70% of my past clients. So you guys check in for me in that questions area and just type in there. What percentage of your past clients do you think you intentionally communicated with? It? Not they're not there on your newsletter, or you drip on them with a brevity market report, but you actually had like a meaningful conversation about real estate. And you know, Okay, so the numbers are pouring in here, Debbie, and I don't know if you can see those, but I, we have a lot of honesty in here, right? A lot of like 15, 25, 10%, 35, a few, like, and by the way, only one of you guys said 100%, Bob, like he's killing it, he's got the good name, right? But I mean, this is a, Nick, Nick is being super honest, like 0%, Nick says. Debbie, I mean, this is a, this is a challenge in our industry, right? And this is what we're going to talk about today. Absolutely. Yep, Bob. Absolutely. And yeah, I can't see them in the chat box. So for some reason, it's not showing up. So as we go along, if there's something you see there that you want to jump in and highlight, please feel free. Um, yeah, you have a hard time keeping my mouth shut. So I will absolutely do that. That's all right. They love you, Bob. So no worries about that. All right. And, and guys, so, you know, I think one of the reasons this topic is a topic I'm so passionate about, the rejection free prospecting is when I started my real estate career at the age of 18, I had zero contacts, no connections, starting from scratch, and I truly had to grind it out, you know, cold call after cold call. And, and yet over the many years in real estate and then the last 20 years of coaching some of the best in the entire nation, including Ben Kenny, who was, uh, a coaching client of mine 10 years ago and Ben and I got together. Um, you know, one of the things I discovered is there are easier ways to, to build your business that, that not that, that making cold calls or calling expires or any of that stuff, not that that isn't all great. And yet I just know, Bob, that some of the people on here with us won't do it. And, and even those who will, why not also add some better, faster, and easier ways to get the business? So today we wanna to make sure too, Bob, that they leave with a couple of gifts that will be helpful to them. One is our scripts for prospecting the people you know. People are always asking Ben and I for scripts, and Ben and I believe in having real conversations, conversations that add value, they're not gimmicky or salesy. I think you'll be very comfortable with these scripts. And then also in a social situation, you know, Bob, let's say that I, I, I'm, you know, at a, a party and you're there at the party. I'm not going to walk up to you and put my real estate card in your hand and say, hey, who do you know? How do I then bring, though, graciously that conversation around to real estate? And then what we call the pink elephant letter. So many of, of our clients, and, and maybe when they come to us for coaching, they will tell me, you know, we need some help because it's been a long time since we really connected with the people we know. So we wrote a letter for them that they can send out to re-engage those people. They use it all the time, very successful. We're gonna share that as a gift today. And last but not least, for those who say, you know, I, I've heard about forward coaching. You know, Ben and I merged our coaching companies uh, back in July. And so we've had many wonderful clients all across North America. And if they have an interest in having a conversation about how coaching might work, we have no contract. We have high level, super experienced coaches. We'll make it easy for them to get connected. Okay. So, Bob, anything you want to say before we dive in and get ready to begin? 
Here's what I would say. Um, every year, NAR does a, a survey of home buyers and sellers. And for the last, ever since I've been in the industry for 15 years, eight, 16 years, however long it's been, um, two thirds, and look, it's 63% one year and 67% the next year. But Debbie, two thirds of all the business in real estate comes either from a past client or somebody referred us that deal. So like this idea of staying in touch, communicating with, you know, really working your sphere and your past clients, it, it's literally where two thirds of the business come from. So I'm excited. Let's let's dig in. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll talk today. We're going to talk about what are some of the best campaigns, things that Ben and I both agree are super important, how to leverage even community events, which I know that Ben's team does a lot of community connection events, many of our top clients do. And then also one that's really super cool, how to form your own organic networking group so you can get those quality leads handed to you. So I wanna make a deal with you guys. Bob and I always have lots of stuff to talk about. We were already reminding ourselves we have to end on time here today. So we're going to make a deal that we promise to give you as much as we can in our short time together. And all we ask is that because you took your valuable time to be here with us today, that you promise me, that you promise Bob, that you will take away at least two to three good action items that you immediately go out there and put in place and get into action. So as we get going, here's a thought. Wouldn't it be great if you could have the best year of your career and do it all by working with people you enjoy? And of course, there's a lot of people out there in the world that we don't know, and sometimes we have to talk to some of them. And yet, as Bob said, most of the agents I meet, most of the agents we coach would say, hands down, the majority of their business comes from the people they know. And yet what they often share with us, Bob, is, and yet I just don't know why I don't get as many referrals as I should. And, and so I want you guys to think about this as we go into this webinar today. What would it look like? How great would it be if you could double or even triple the repeat and referral business from the people you know? So no doubt, marketing to strangers has value. And yet the fast track to quality business are those people you already know. So I'd like to ask you guys to, you can type it in the chat box or write it down. Just really think about what percentage of your business in 2019 was past client, friend, sphere of influence, um, referral, from a, a sphere or past client, what percentage of the business actually came from those people you know? Okay. Now then, as you get that number, I'm sure you'd like to have more business from those folks. So I wanna ask you, can you honestly say that you're doing everything you can, that you're doing everything right when it comes to working them? And I think most of you would say no. In fact, Bob, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something a little bit bold that I a word I don't usually say. I will say I never meet an agent who is doing it perfectly. So I often challenge people when when Ben and I are out doing live events, I'll say, who in the room thinks they are phenomenal and flawless? at doing their, their past client and sphere process. And actually, Bob, at the Newport Beach event, not long ago, Fred said from Irvine, raised his hand, stood up, and he shared with the group. And I will tell you what, he was doing some fantastic things to work that sphere of influence. And yet, what was the gap? The gap was they weren't actually calling enough of them. And the people they were calling, they weren't actually asking them specifically for a referral. So there's always a gap. And I don't say that to make you guys feel bad. I actually say it to give you a lot of hope and encouragement that when we close those gaps, more money is possible. So 100% of agents I meet tell me they need to be what better working this group. So Bob, before our meeting today, I surveyed 
some agents. I was actually going into an event and I, they asked me to talk about this topic. So we surveyed the agents and here's what they said about why they don't do more to work this group. They fear being rejected because it's been such a long time. And also I had to laugh when I saw this one. I'd like to know how to touch them without having actual contact, right? So this fear of being rejected, and, and Bob, I find that some people love working the group or others fear it because they would take that rejection more personally since these are people that they know, right? But, but think about this, Bob, when is the last time, like I'll, I'll pick on something and I have actually no idea. When's the last time that you bought a new car? Oh, it's been four years. Okay, so how many times has your car salesman reached or salesperson reached out to you in those four years? Zero. Do you care? No, not really. Do you sit around and think about it? Like, I'm so annoyed he hasn't called me? No. You know what's funny though? I the, the <laughs> I'm a little bit annoyed by the last real estate agent I used. They haven't called me. That That's a little bit more annoying to me, actually. Sure. But the car salesman, no, I don't care. I don't think about it at all. Well, so here's my thought on this, guys. Your people are busy. They're not sitting around pining away for you. Sure, they would love to hear from you. They would feel that you valued and appreciated them. You are the real estate expert that can give them advice and news on the market. And yet they're not keeping score that it's been 24 months since they last spoke to you. And by the way, what's the worst thing that could happen? They tell you they're too busy. They don't have time. You find they already moved without you. Oh, well, right. Move on and make that next call. Now, another survey um, person said, I, I, I just, I don't know how to ask for referrals without feeling, making them feel pressured and used. And yet I want them to know that when they refer their friends and family to me, they're actually helping their friends and family. So in the script that we send you, because we don't have a lot of time to go through scripts today, we'll give you some help with this, but I want you to think about this. If you come from the passion of leading with value, of providing quality content, of being the wise advisor. If I said to Bob, you know, Bob, I so appreciate your loyalty. Uh, there is any anything you need. Call me day or night. I'm happy to help. And one of the things I love most is to have clients for life to help them with their real estate needs and to help their friends and family. Bob, is there anyone today in the people that you know, your family, at church, at work, the kids' soccer team, anybody at all that even just has a question that they might need an answer for? I would be happy to speak to them. See, we're coming from service, right guys? And and you're good at what you do People love to talk about real estate. Here's one too, that the, the survey person said, I need to be sure I'm sending them information that they would find useful so that that helps them remember me for their needs or their friends as well. So Bob and I will talk a little bit about what kind of valuable information. And again, remember guys, 100% of the people that sign up for coaching list this as one of their priorities. I'm assuming because you're here today, it's also one of yours. So I'm gonna encourage you in your two or three action items, it's okay to write down something that makes you just a little uncomfortable. Because by the way, the things we typically avoid are usually the things that will make the most difference. Now. Bob, Ben and I agree on something, and I know you just left a meeting with Ben, and you know you guys were talking about markets and shifts and trends. And, and now more than ever, with the disruption of the real estate industry, with Zillow and every other real estate portal trying to get in front of you and your clients, 
the fact that every day, it seems like more and more people are getting their real estate license. The flat rate, cut rate companies out there that are trying to steal your clients. See, now more than ever, if you don't circle the wagons, if you don't lock down that community of your warm contacts and protect them at a high level, you will lose them because the disruptors want nothing more than to take them away from you. You know, guys, when I first got into the real estate business, I had a great broker, he was super helpful. And he said to me, you know, Debbie, if you'll just send a Christmas card to your past clients in Sphere every year, you will have clients for life. Well, that was a simpler time, <laughs> right? Because cool. I think we would all agree, there is no way that would be enough today to stay top of mind with the people in our personal community. Right, Bob, anything you want to add to that? No, I, I, mean, I, I, was, I just go back to that NAR survey. It's like required reading around here. You know, 65% of the people did business with, you know, the business came from a referral, but five years from now when they're ready to sell, only, you know, 18% of them, I think last year, actually used the agent they bought their house with Originally, even though most of them say that agent did a good job. So like this concept of just being top of mind for your for your past clients, the, the numbers just prove it year after year after year is where most of your business comes from. And most of us aren't doing a good enough job of getting those people to do business with us again. Yeah. And it used to be OK to skate a little bit on this. Right. Because I think many of the people who are your, you know, your clients and are on the on the webinar today, they do a really good job. So the fact that they do a really good job often people will return to them. And yet I read something the other day that said that in all industries, customer loyalty is down by 50%. And I was reading a book that said that the average consumer, if they turn on the TV, look at their phone, go to their computer, drive to work in the morning, you know, listen to the news, they're hit with 60,000 high caliber ad messages in a week. Now, granted, those are not all about real estate. It's just the, proves the point though, there's a lot of noise and a lot of distraction that if you don't drop that web of connection on these valuable people, you know, three years, five years, 10 years from now, you'll lose them. But the good news is, even with all the disruption of the industry, I actually was uh, a keynote speaker at an event and I was sitting next to a vice president of Zillow. And he shared the statistic with me that even though Zillow does everything they can to get these buyers and sellers first, that 90% of them will still choose an agent they know and trust. We just wanna be sure you're that agent because everyone knows more than one real estate agent. So we got to stay top of mind. So Ben loves talking about something called sphere in gear, right? So high gear, how do we fire this up? And Bob, I know you spend a lot of time with Ben talking about this topic. Maybe you want to speak a little bit to this slide here. Yeah. So one of the first things that we do in, in inside of Ben's business is we need to kind of prioritize or, or really assign a value to the people in our sphere, right? Because, I mean, so we, we use A plus, A, B, and C, and we'll just use those as tags inside of our database. But we, you know, pretty clearly know who is an A plus, you know, past client or person in our sphere. And what does that mean? What is an A? What is a B? What is a C? So an A plus is somebody that consistently year over year, they're going to refer me to three or more people, right? Like I'm going to get referrals from that person all the time, right? Consistently throughout the year. So for Ben, that might be his, his hairdresser. And he always, you know, says the joke. And if, if that person wasn't giving me three referrals each year, I'm going to find a new hairdresser. But it's this idea that I've got these A plus people, people that if they hear somebody talking about real estate are going to stop that person and go, you got to use Ben Kinney. He's the most amazing agent ever, right? Then you get your A's and your A's are somebody that refer you one or two people every year, pretty consistently. Right. But they're not going to stop somebody that they don't know or, or butt in on a conversation at work. That a person is going to 
um, give you a referral. If somebody asks them, hey, who's an agent I should use? They'd say, hey, you gotta use Ben, that's who I use, but they wouldn't interrupt somebody and say, you gotta use Ben. My Bs are gonna be people that, that know me by name, and if I call them up, right, they're going to um, you know, take my call, they're gonna, they're gonna be warm, but, but they're not going to put my name out there um, very often. In fact, I very rarely get a referral from them. And a C would be somebody where when I call them, they might struggle to remember my name, right? We've had one or two interactions at some point. And so we kind of prioritize these people. And then based on, I think it's on the next slide, Debbie, based on having these people in kind of a priority order, we're going to create a, a plan for how we work them. Okay, so we don't treat everybody in our sphere the same. For example, we're, you know, somebody that's a, a B or a C, right? We might only see them in person once a year. Whereas our, our A people, we're gonna visit a, A's and A plus, we're gonna visit them like once a quarter or make an effort to get out to them once a quarter. This particular slide, and I can go through, I'll do it really quick. Here's kind of what um, Ben's team does for sphere and gear. And a lot of the, a lot of, just real estate agents in general think, okay, I, I wanna work my sphere, right? I know I need to work my sphere, but they do it on the gym model, which is I go into the gym and I look around and I, I've got my gym membership, right? And then I go, I don't really know what to do in here. So I, I don't do anything, right? I do a couple of bench presses and I leave, right? Um, we, we try to think about things in models and systems. So we use kind of the CrossFit plan to work our sphere, which is our agents, when they come into their, you know, to work each day or, or they just come into our business initially, we give them a plan that says, here's how you're gonna work your sphere. And it's it's highly aggressive, right? I'll, I'll lay it out for you guys really quick. And it's kind of on these slides here, but let's deal with like an A or an A plus person. They're gonna get uh, two emails a month from us at a minimum, okay? Um, and those are, in our world are market reports, but that's 24 touches in a year. If we can get them two emails a month, they're going to get one phone call a month from them, so it's another 12, that's 36 touches. They're gonna get one piece of physical mail from us, right, that's gonna be 48 touches now. They're going to get um, one so meaningful social media touch a month, that's another 12 touches with that person, 60 in a year, and then we're gonna try to get kind of face to face or belly to belly with them three times in a year. That That is our, our plan for working our sphere, and look, we dial it down if they're a C, right, we, we don't, maybe call them as many times, maybe they get called once a year, once a quarter or something, or semi-annually. But we have a plan. So all of our agents kind of know, and look, does everybody hit all 63 touches? No, right? But some of them only get in 30 touches, but that's, it's many more touches than most of you guys are getting in, right? Now, this particular slide and kind of the, the point of this one is, look, you, you build your own plan, right? Copy our plan, I don't care. but if you don't actually set time aside to do these things, you're not going to do them. And so we have kind of built into our into our workflow, into our daily kind of what we do, this idea that I'm working my database. Now, you know, Ben's teams use Privity and there's a series of kind of plans they've set up that have things like a quarterly check-in and that plan might be applied on every, you know, whatever it is, every B level client in our database, right? So um, th there's a plan. We, everybody knows what the plan is and there's time set aside to actually go out and be able to execute against that plan. Yeah, Bob, you know what I really love with a, with a great CRM that has campaigns built in? That C group, guys, that really is what maybe years ago would have ended up in a trash can, right? Because yeah. they're not hot. You don't have time for them. Maybe they're not even worth the price of a stamp. Maybe you've got so many A plus A's and B's to call, you're never gonna get around to calling them. And yet, why not put them in a campaign, nurture them, automated trips on them, so that someday, if they buy or sell, they may call you. So, you know, it's just, it just fast and easy to do that. And people always ask me, well, I, I get it that, you know, I should send emails and emails are great. You know, one of the things Ben and I talk about a lot though, is people don't open their emails like you might believe that they would. In fact, Bob, you may have more up-to-date information, but I had read a while back that even if people know you, often less than 20% oh, may yeah. open yeah. the email, right? 
numbers. Eight to 12% open rates across the real estate industry is what you, you should expect. Like even if they know you. Even if they know you. And so what that means is you feel really good about sending out that email and yet how many people are actually seeing it. Now I'm not saying you shouldn't send it out. And, and you know, if you guys have heard Ben on a webinar before, he always says, don't poop in your database, right? So don't be sending emails that aren't powerful and content rich. And yet direct mail is alive and well. Because I knew I was gonna do this webinar, I actually went home last night and looked in my mailbox and I counted how many pieces of direct mail did I get in my mailbox yesterday? And it was only five, five. And yet the average person could get a couple hundred emails a day potentially. Yeah. So the direct mail is alive and well. You'd want to use your marketing budget though appropriately, sending items of value and spending more on the categories that give you a greater return. All right, guys, so you're A plus, boy, you're gonna take great care of those people and you're gonna work it down the line and potentially your C's don't ever get a mail piece from you. You may decide they're not worth it. And yet direct mail is certainly alive and well. So here's some things Ben likes to talk about when it comes to emailing your sphere, um, short and sweet, items of value, invitations to an event, great real estate content. Um, Bob, anything you wanna to add to this one? I mean, this is, you know, we've got a lot of tools at Brevity and some of you guys on this call are Brevity clients and some of you aren't, but um, in our business today, the, the easily, the most valuable thing that we're capable of sending our clients is a market report. And it's a tool inside of Brevity. Look, Brevity's not the only place that has these, right? But it's this idea that we are, we're going to set up and so in our business in ben's business every person in our database right past clients sphere like literally anybody where we have their physical address and we have an email address for them we are going to get them on a market report so they can see what i believe is kind of the most valuable thing we could share with them which is what's selling what's the activity what's the real estate activity around your house right What's what's sold around your house? What's currently active? What's pending? Um, now, I, I mentioned eight to 12% open rates kind of across our industry in terms of just one-off emails that are being sent or our market reports get uh, in a given week somewhere between 36 and 40% open rates. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is, you know, every time it goes out to them, it's got their address in the title, right? And people see stuff like that and go, ooh, this is about my house. It's also coming from somebody they know and they trust, right? It's information about their property and what's selling around them from the person who should be sending them that information, right? It's not a, like, you're not a chef, so should you really be sending out, like, recipes, right? Like, it's, it's, it's all these things. It's short and sweet. It's an item of value. It's not an invitation to something, but it's real estate content, right? That these easily are the most important thing we send to our sphere. My mom's a real estate agent, Debbie, you know this. She's kind of a right. superstar in Ben's world, right? 79 transactions her first year. I'm super proud of her. But my mom would tell you that the, the most valuable tool she has today in her real estate tool belt is her market reports. Like she gets kind of those come list me type email responses every single month, right? Somebody's saying to her, hey, Gail, You've been sending this information about what's selling around our house for the last year. Like, I think we're ready to talk about what our house would sell for. And, and it's consistent, right? Now, the reason that happens is because, you know, she's got a database of 4,000 people, Debbie, something like that, and probably right. similar to many people here. She has 1,300 market reports set up on a database of 4,000 people. So, you know, a third of her database twice a month is getting this, this kind of really solid information about about them, right? About their house, about what's selling right around them. And, and Gail spent a minute on each one of those people over the course of the last, you know, however long, right? Just that one minute to set it up. And now that's something that's going to email her sphere every two weeks, forever, basically, until they say, ooh, I wonder if we could get that much for our house. Or, you know, they say, Gail, stop. But nobody ever says, Gail, stop. Like, this is really right. great information. Well, no, they love to get this type of information. Absolutely. And, and we, we want to get in front of them, though, also, right, guys? So we've already talked about, you know, emailing and, and we've got these, you know, direct mail pieces going out. And yet you need to see them. 
And it was so funny, Bob. Um, I was at a memorial service a couple of weeks ago and I'm walking out and a lady came up to me and she goes, hey, Debbie, um, hey, I don't know if you remember me. I think I was the first house you ever listed at the age of 18. Well, first thing I did was apologize. I said, I'm sorry, I'm sure I wasn't very good. And I promise, you know, I got better. And yet I, it made me stop and think that how many years can we maintain the loyalty if we don't see them once in a while? And that's why it's important to, you know, have some of these community connection events. If they're your AAA people, which by the way, that AAA list, you might have a huge database, but that A plus or triple A's, it might be 10 people. It might be 25 people. And those might be the people you have meals with or invite to a party. In fact, one of our clients said to me, I have 25 people on my A plus list. And my goal is, and I give them a goal at the beginning of the year, because they are my fans, they are my advocates, to find three referrals for me each year. So he's setting up a plan with these people, get me three referrals a year, that's 75 referrals, out of those he converts at least half. That's a good chunk of his transactions with quality people, but he has dinner with these A plus people. He nurtures them. So we wanna find ways to get in front of them. So social media, I'm going to let you run with this one, Bob. Why don't you give a few tips direct from Ben and Brivity? So I, I think here, here, when we talk with our teams about, you know, leveraging social media to kind of stay top of mind with their their sphere, their past clients, um, these are the things that, you know, you can see them on the screen, right? It's this idea that we can build relationships. Ford is family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. It's kind of a... What a communication strategy that says like if I'm going out to to talk to somebody right and on social media like I'm focused on these things their family that their work right that what they do for recreation or their dreams and the cool thing about social media is people are generally posting about those things right their family their occupation what they do recreationally or or their dreams and so the, what we we talk about uh, meaningful touches, Debbie, and so like every day you guys are on social media, touching your sphere and your past clients, kind of, and that doesn't sound very good, by the way, but you're, you're like kind of in this hands on. It's like, oh, I like their status, or um, when they post a picture of their kids, I say, oh, how cute, with with 25 other people that said how cute. We want to leave leave touches. We want to leave comments that have meaning and value that stand out. So if somebody posted a picture with, with their kid, it's not just, hey, you know, Chase is, is, looks so cute. It's, wow, Chase is growing up. He's, you know, he's getting so big. And it's a comment that stands out, right? We're super excited that he just started soccer. You know, we're going to come watch a game. Like, it, it's, it's something like if you were to go back and if that comment was left to you, you'd think, man, I got four comments on this thing. But, like, Debbie's comment really stood out, right? This stuff's non-invasive because we just kind of leave it and it's there for them to consume, right? They consume that comment whenever they, they want to consume it. Um, and it's it's 90% personal, meaning I, I very rarely would like leave a, a business comment or something or a, or a post on somebody's Facebook page, but I might. Let's say I had a client, a past client, and I knew that they were looking for a you know an investment property or something. I might go onto their Facebook and leave a link to a to an investment property that just came on the market on their page and say, hey, Debbie, gosh, you know, when I was looking through the MLS this morning, this property just hit the market and boy, oh, this would be a really great one for you, right? That, that could be a comment that I could leave, but most of the time it's it's family, it's occupation, it's recreation. I'm trying to connect with them to, to again, kind of keep myself top of mind, but there's a way to do it. And, and that way is to, to have meaningful touches with them. So that's that's kind of how we think about social media in our spirits. That's this idea that we can stay connected because that's really easy to like it or to say, hey, great pick, right? We're gonna go that extra little step and, and spend another minute to say something meaningful. Right, Ab absolutely. So social media, working your sphere, you can't be all about business, right? And And the key of being always positive, I think we gotta be really careful about getting, uh, and I'm not even saying politics, like actual politics, it can even be in a community, you know, things that are going on that are dividing a community. You, you want to be mindful 
that what I'm putting out there, people are viewing this and they may be judging me. And you know, Bob, I've even had clients tell us that, hey, when I when I overdid a little too much about you know, my kids and my vacations and my getaways, I, I kind of lost business because people are like, wow, you look like you're so busy. Are you like semi-retired? So it's a shame. And yet we have to be mindful that people are watching, right? And and they're judging. I think so anything the, you want to add to that, Bob? One of the things that I see off of this particular slide that I think can be done really well or it can be done kind of poorly is that the examples of, of your success or kind of highlighting what you're doing inside of your business. Um, like, for example, there's a, like, every time you have a closing, right, it's an opportunity to go into Facebook, tag your clients, kind of thank them for the business, right? If, if, you, if it's set up properly, their friends are going to see that, right? So there's a way to do things kind of properly, or there's a way to just go in there and make it all about me and look how successful I am and, you know, close another deal and, which like Debbie said, can, can maybe turn people off. And I think finding that balance where you're not scared to go in there and talk about your business, talk about the successes that you're having, but it has to be balanced, right? It has to be balanced with you posting about your family or, or your recreation or your dreams, right? Not just posting about your occupation, but if you can find that way to occasionally highlight those successes or the successes your clients are having or the success you had for your clients, um, those can be really powerful, right? Like going out there and saying, hey, like in Bellingham, for example, really hard first time home buyers market. But geez, if I, you know, if I was able to help a first time home buyer get into a place here under 350,000, I'm going to be letting my friends and family know that because I might have a friend or family sitting there looking for that home, first time home in Bellingham under 350,000. And that might be the thing that makes them go, oh, wait, he helped that guy do it. I wonder if he can help me do it. Right. So no more than 10% about business. And I think when you're doing the business, it could be inviting them to an event. It could be inviting them to an educational event. It could be offering a resource. Hey, here's an interesting report. Thought you guys might find it fun. Or those success stories. Just think of it as not about you. It's about the conversations that might be going on in their mind, right? And and. It's called social media for a reason. It's very social. Okay. Here's one that we do. We probably do this. Every agent on all of our teams does this one like twice a year where we post something saying, um, hey, I was just, you know, or I was just, I was just researching the market here in Federal Way and your home might be worth a lot more than you actually think it is. If you're curious what your house is worth, reach out and let me know. Right, this yep. idea that like, I was working today and oh my goodness, like housing prices are up here in federal way. Like if you're curious what your house is worth, reach out. When our people do that, it's not like this crushing, you know, you have 50 people raise their hand, Debbie, but a lot right. of times one or two people that behind the scenes, you don't even see the comments, right? They'll like direct message you and say, hey, could you, you know, we, we, we have been thinking about it and gosh, if home prices are up here in federal way, you know, it, it's just a, it opens a conversation. But again, that's, that's, in the context of it was one of the last 10 things we posted was that it wasn't every day we're posting that, right? People tune right. that out. Right, exactly. Um, so mailers talking about entering the conversation in their mind. I, I'm going to pick on this one and some of you, forgive me because you may have your postcards already in the mail. I am not a fan of sending out a postcard that says it's time to change your clock. OK, here's why they will figure it out. If they wake up late for church, they will know their phone adjusts automatically. Some of their cars change automatically. And I don't think that that is a high level conversation that you as their real estate professional want to spend your super valuable marketing dollars on. So what are some of the conversations in their mind? Well, they're sitting around thinking, should I move up or stay and remodel? Hey, maybe it's time to downsize. I've got this five bedroom house. The kids are all gone. I don't know if I need it. I want to live somewhere cool. Or hey, I'd like to buy a rental, but I don't know what that looks like. Or can I help my kids buy a house? What's the market done? You know, what's the coronavirus done to my value of my home? I mean, so many things that you could talk about that would be valuable. And then, of course, the Popeyes, you know, especially with that 
that A plus group. And, and just stopping by, I used to, Bob, I used to map out like on a Saturday, I would take a Saturday a month and I would just map out a series of stops. And I would have a small gift, something I could leave on, you know, their porch that's not gonna, you know, have the dogs trying to eat it or the kids trying to drink it, right? Something simple. Sometimes it's just even a farmer's market bag with a scratch pad in it, with a note, sorry I missed you, just stop by to say hello. Because again, the more you connect with them, that gives them the opportunity to ask you questions. And I often think of it as stirring the pot. The more you're connected, the more quality information you provide, the more likely they are to ask questions that could lead to them actually buying or selling some real estate. Um, some cool events, pie giveaway, lots of clients love that because they actually come to you. Client appreciation parties, a favorite is movie night. We all have those movie theaters in our community that are a little bit older, pretty affordable, and you can get an old classic, you know, to play. Some type of business mixer. A lot of our agents that we work with, they make a point of connecting with the small business owners in their community and getting together and networking with people who have their ideal client. And then there's the, we call them community connection events like the neighborhood garage sales, the shredding events, concert in the park, movie night on the green belt. And, and guys, I get it. It requires a little bit of time and organization. Um, actually, Bob, I don't even know if you know this, but next week on the Forward Coaching uh, private member site, we are launching six community connection events and four educational events. And, and the cool thing about these educational events, your attendance will be small, typically. The conversion is high. One of our coaching clients, Jada, she does a, an, an educational event every month. Move up, downsize, rent versus own. And she has usually five to 30 people attend. And over the last year that she's been doing this, 100 percent conversion to a listing or sale within 90 days so doesn't have in fact she told me one event she was devastated only one couple showed up but they promptly listed their house before they left the meeting so it wasn't bad right so offer uh, it uh -huh, go ahead Look, one of the things that's cool about events and Ben's teams run and we call it an event-based business like our open houses for example we make events out of our open houses right it might be a food drive or a, a, a coat drive or a, a school supply drive or you know depending on the time of the year but when you have an event and you think about those other things that we want we want to the other ways we want to touch our sphere and our past clients right like a call for example or a or you know some kind of a mail piece our events become the strategy that we then use to drive to, to, to make those reach outs to them right if we right. have the like Leo's team up here in Bellingham does the clean water event. So they do it once a quarter and they're gonna, or maybe once a month, they're gonna call their sphere and say, hey, this month's um, you know, clean water event is on, is on the 30th, right? And, and then they're gonna send out a piece of mail and they're gonna send an email and they can do many of those touch points around the event so that they, they are getting in those meaningful touches with the database, but it's in an attempt to drive them to that event or to let them know about that event. Absolutely. And I would say, you know, to keep in mind is on the fun events, you're not going to get as many leads because remember, if they came to the family photo in the park event, they didn't come there necessarily with real estate on their mind. That's OK, though, because you're still going to get connected. You get to see them. Maybe it even allows you to opt new people into your marketing funnel. On the educational events, they're coming for that purpose. I would think the minimum you could expect on the conversion, assuming you do a good job with your follow-up, would be 50 plus percent. So one of the things we teach our coaching clients to do, and Ben and I do this really well in our businesses, is finding people who have your ideal client and partnering with them to do these events because not only does it help with the workload, it helps offset the cost. We don't just want their money though, we want them inviting their list because if you partnered for an example, 
on a move up event and you had a great lender and a CPA and maybe a tax attorney and a life insurance person and these all have quality people, they invite their group. Now their groups get to meet you. It's a really warm way to get new prospects for your database. So who has your ideal client and who is willing to actively participate in the event and help you drive people to that event? And of course, when you work more closely with a great group of vendors and affiliates, they're just gonna be that much more likely to send you additional referrals. So even if you don't like to speak and you're thinking, oh, I could do the fun event, but I don't wanna do the educational events, you can still host a successful educational event. Just get one of your vendors or affiliates to do the heavy work when it comes to speaking, right? So you don't, you don't have to be a professional speaker, which by the way, since it's a free event, they're not expecting you to be perfect and they really much rather have just a more interactive and engaging opportunity to get to know you. So the hard way to do events, people just invite people from their database, they're struggling to get the right people, or they have no automated follow-up in place. So here are the three secrets. Play to your strength. Which one do you prefer to do? Get those right people, and that's through your sphere, your social media, it's through your joint venture partners, and then once they come to that event, we have to step by step, follow up, see what they're looking to do, stay in contact, and nurture those people. And the magic of conversion is always going to be in the follow up. So guys, as we get close to the end of our webinar today, I want to share something that I, I guess I'm going to use the word, Bob, I am preaching to our coaching clients. Be obsessed with increasing your database. Get out there in your communities and meet people and offer them the opportunity to be part of your information loop. Whether they're a buyer or seller today, you never know when they're going to be ready to buy and sell. So just like any business, you want to be obsessed with growing that list, categorizing them properly, and marketing to them effectively. So just a quick review. We want to drop that web of connection. We want to leverage the power of these joint venture relationships. We want to use community events to meet new people and also to get face-to-face -face with the people that we know and already have relationships. And last but not least, why not even think about in the next 30 days forming your own organic networking group or finding one to join? So your joint venture partners could be part of your own organic networking group. So guys, I hope you have your two to three action items. So if so, Bob, maybe they can type that in the chat box and let us know they, they've got something valuable, what they're going to implement. If they have a question, go right ahead, guys, and type that in. We're going to hang out here with you for a minute. So while you're typing, because there's always a little bit of delay of you hearing us and getting that typed in, I put up here on the screen the link of what you need to do if you would like to talk to us about some of these great things we're working on with our clients what it looks like to work and coach with us. I will let you know that here at Forward Coaching, we do not have a team of boiler room salespeople who are going to hard sell you into coaching. That's not our style. So if you go to the www.forwardcoaching.com um, backslash consult, what we're going to do is get some great information from you about you. And we're going to set a, a custom one hour session to talk about your business, your goals, and at the end of that conversation, if you have questions about what it looks like to work with us, we'll be happy to answer those for you. So Bob, do we have any questions and do we have any ahas and takeaways that popped up on the screen? On creating events uh, around their open house. Yeah, I mean, that's a, we use that it, almost every month. Uh, that That is something we put into play and it's it's been a really great, 
kind of way to reach out to our past clients in our sphere, invite them to something. Look, most of them aren't going to, they don't want to come to your open house, right? But they might come and drop off, you know, some some canned goods or something. It just positions us as somebody in our community that's the cares, right? Like we're not just trying to sell houses here. We're trying to do something a little bit better. Joanne, yeah, we'll get everybody the recording of this webinar. Um, let me look. So Donna says, she, how does your mom determine which third of her database gets that market report? Essentially, in her database, everybody she has an address, a physical address for, and their email address, they get the market report. So it's it's kind of like a third of her in a third of her database, she has a physical address and and, a, and an email for them, so they're going to get one. She's not going to ask them, right? Some of those people are leads. Some of her sphere are past clients. The other two thirds of her data base, by the way, are just a bunch of leads, right? People that she's trying to get an address for so she can add them onto a market report. They might be getting listing alerts anyway in some area that she thinks they might be looking to buy or whatever. But so that literally, Donna, it's who do I have in my database where I have their address and I have their email? They should be getting this information from us. Um, so that's how she kind of makes that determination. Um, my problem is, how do I leverage? Okay, so I'm a relatively new realtor, but I've been doing and love doing community events in my area, teaming up with my in-house mortgage specialists, local retailers. My problem is, how do I leverage community events to get clients? Like, here, here would be a couple things I'd say, um, Aruna. The sign in, like getting people to actually sign in when they come to that event, right, That's is going to be... That's a must. That's a must, <laughs> right? Get them to sign in, guys, because we want to drop them into that system. That's right. So we, in our world, right, they could have a, you know, you could have a form on your website that they, they, they register on. It's going to come into the CRM. You know, we can tag them with a particular tag or something. We always do, when we do events of that nature, so there's, there's always this concept of signing in. And Brevity quickly is actually a way and using a keyword is a way you can get people to sign in. But once they sign in, we, on that, that actual form they sign in on, we always have three types of questions, or three questions. One question is gonna cover the idea that they might be buying in the next 12 months. So it says something like, you know, do you have any plans to, to buy or invest in real estate in the next 12 months? Yes or no, right? Then we're gonna have a question around, like, do they own a home and have they thought about its value or, or potentially selling it? So something like, do you own the home you currently live in and are you interested in what the, what the value of that home is today? And then we always, because Ben's world's all about growth, expansion, um, talent, we always have a question around talent. Have you ever considered a career in real estate? Right. So when we leave an event, people, again, it's, it's all about getting them to, as they come to that event, to, to register. Hey, you're here. Sign in for us. Right. And out of that, then, because what's it, you know, you get 100 people that show up at your event, right? 80 of them are going to agree to register. The other 20 will sneak around and just sit down or, or mingle or whatever. Um, but then we just funnel them down further. How many of that 80 actually answered positive to one of these questions we put out there that means they could be a prospect for our business, a buyer, a seller, or talent? Um, so, Aruna, those would be a, a couple of things that I would say, and, you know, look. Forward Coaching has a whole kind of course built around this idea of doing events and, and really getting the most out of it. But those would be a couple things off the top of my head to answer kind of, I mean, really a, a kind of where the rubber and, meets the road question. And many of our clients do offer like a raffle, a prize, a drawing. So they're happy, you know, to fill out a ticket or or to register. Um, and for the educational events, they may actually send it out on, you know, like an event bright or something. So they're registering. And really, you just want to call after and and say thank you. You know, thank you for attending. Thank you for supporting. We hope you enjoyed it. Would you be interested in being in, invited to our future events? And by the way, we had asked some questions. I don't think you had a chance to answer. May I ask you, and let's use the great line of Ben's, what are your real estate plans for the next 12 months? All right, guys, so Zig Ziglar, who passed away a few years ago, he had a great saying, timid salespeople have skinny kids. Or I guess if you don't have children, you could say skinny checkbooks. So we, we have to get out into the community. We can't hide in our office. We can't hide in our home. And yet I hope today encourages you that you can do it in a way that you feel good about. Being a champion for the community. Um, you know, it, it's so funny too sometimes, Bob, you know,
because of, of my skills and, and Ben's skills, probably 60% of the people we coach are teams or want to build a team. And then inside of that, about 40% are in the luxury space. And often people will say, well, I can't, I can't do a garage sale event in a luxury community. Yes, you can. And they love it. Our clients do it all the time. And in fact, in Corona Del Mar, California, very, very expensive neighborhood. It's like the crown jewel of Orange County, you know, pretty much 3 million to 40 million. And I went to the little farmer's market there last Saturday and lo and behold, one of our clients was there at the farmer's market dressed nicely and he was handing out farmer market bags with his marketing information inside. And, and people might go, oh, my goodness, I could never go into a high-end neighborhood and farmer's market and hand out bags. How tacky. Do you know that is one of his best sources of opportunity to connect with those neighbors? So I guess I would just say, guys, get over yourself. Get out there and talk to them. They like you. They like you. You have valuable things to share. And if you're stuck on how to go about it, talk to us. We will help. All right, Bob, so I know we got to go. Um, anything else you want to add before we well, sign oh, off? Yeah, there's, there's one last thing I want to I wanna offer, and then there's one thing I'd like you to, to repeat, if that's okay. Olivia said, what was the script again for asking for referrals from your past clients? Debbie, I'm going to have you give her that in just a second. I'm going to sure. give you guys a script that we use. In January, every one of our Ben Kinney expansion teams and every agent on it called their past clients or, or their kind of A, well, I think maybe even their B, B, A, or A plus sphere. And we, we left a script of this. That's what it sounds like, essentially. Um, it's it's We call it our planning the year script. And it's basically, so you, you could just call and say, you know, hey, this is Ben Kinney. Listen, I'm giving you guys a call because I'm trying to plan out my year. And so I'm just curious, do you guys have any real estate related plans this year? And then literally just shut up. And that's probably the hardest part for most people because if you shut up and they don't say nothing after about two seconds, you want to fill that that void, right? right. But you just call and that's what we say. And look, sometimes we'll do it around like if I was doing this, I would position it around my wife and I go to Disneyland a couple times a year. So I'd position around my Disneyland trip, right? Hey, I'm calling you guys because Aaron and I are trying to get a trip planned later this year. You guys know that we love to go to Disneyland, but we never want to do it during a time when one of our best clients might need us for something real estate related. So I'm just calling today to see, do you guys have any real estate plans for, you know, for the rest of the year? Maybe okay. you want to buy, sell, invest, right? No, awesome. Do you know anybody that does, right? De Debbie, give me your script for asking for referrals from your past clients. You and, and, and we will be sending that. So you will get the actual script. Just, just a thought though uh, on this is theory of reciprocity. In the psychology of the world, of how people are persuaded to do something, one of the biggest persuaders is theory of reciprocity. So I'll give you a quick example. You know, I'm, I'm on a Southwest flight the other day and I was tired and my bag was heavy and this guy saw me struggle and he took it away from me and he put it up there and then he took my coat and put it up there and then he closed it for me and I'm working on the plane and I've got a drink ticket because I'm in the A group and and I'm not gonna drink. So I'm like, here, here, take my drink ticket because see, I wanted to repay the favor. So when you're offering something to people, when you're inviting them to an event, when you're saying, hey, I, I kinda wanna plan my year around you. You know, you're valuable to me. Is there something you're going to need? Or gosh, you know, so many clients have been asking me what's happening in the market. And I just wanted to offer you to answer any questions you have. In fact, I'd be happy to offer an annual real estate checkup. Would that be something helpful? See, now that I've given them something, it's very easy to say, and by the way, there's nothing I love more than helping you or your friends or family. Is there any one person today you can think of who might need my help? So because you just did something for them, they're more likely to dig a little deeper, to think a little longer and try to give you a lead, right? And it's important though, don't just say, keep me in mind. They're busy, they're not going to do that. Who do you know today? Can you think of one person 
and then do your memory joggers. Someone at church, someone at work, someone on the kids' sports team. I would really appreciate it. All right, so we'll get those scripts to you guys. I got to go, got another webinar waiting, but hey guys, thank you so much. I see we had a huge group here today and that makes me super happy because that means you guys will all go out there and do a better job and please reach out to us if we can help you. We would love to speak with you. And Bob, thanks for helping today. Debbie, always my pleasure. You go have an awesome rest of your day. You guys get out of here, forwardcoaching.com slash consult if you're interested in Debbie and her team kind of helping you drive your business forward. My name is Bob Stewart. On behalf of Debbie and Mikey and all the people behind the scenes that make these things happen, bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.